Do you rip your physical media to MKV files for playback in your home theater? I want to go over one of the errors that I think a lot of people make and show how to avoid it with regards to subtitles. So I've been ripping a variety of movies in support of some additional content that I want to make on the channel, basically ripping 4K Blu-rays, and I found a situation recurring through a lot of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies for how they structure subtitles on the discs. And I think this is an area of error that a lot of people get wrong when they're making MKVs and they're ripping their physical media. So one of the things about subtitles in a movie, particularly something that has science fiction, aliens speaking, is that some elements of the dialogue of the movie are in a foreign language or an alien language and those specific subtitles need to be present in your rip. Otherwise, you don't know, you know what the Germans are saying in Captain America or what the aliens are saying uh, in some other Marvel movie. I think a lot of people think that it's very easy to manage those subtitles because in many cases, true, the forced subtitles, as we call them, the, the, the specific subset of needed subtitles are embedded in the actual larger subtitle track, but that's not a guarantee and it's not always the case. So let's take a look at how the MCU movies are on the 4K discs and why you can't just rely necessarily on automatic software or some kind of simple guarantee that you're getting the right subtitles with a program or an automated way when you rip these movies. So let's take a look at the computer, make MKV. I'm gonna show you exactly how to verify, to, to get and verify the proper subtitles in your rips. All right, we're going to just be recording the screen here of, of uh, the computer that I'm using to do these rips and make these MKVs. I don't have a direct screen capture option here, but what I want to show is that I've already used any DVD to take Black Panther in this case and rip to an ISO uh, that I've got resident on the solid state drive on the computer. And I'm going to basically make the MKV out of the ISO because in this case, it's going to take a couple of rips a couple of extractions, MKV extractions, to make sure that we end up with the final file, the right file. We can see here blackpanther.iso is the 4K disc rip of that movie. So over here I've loaded that ISO into make MKV. We see Marvel's Black Panther and I've already kind of pre-selected what I want to go into the resulting MKV. So let's take a look at that. If you notice right off the bat there is two playlists here. Uh, both of the same size, 56 gigabytes. One doesn't have chapters though, and one does. So we want to take the one that has the chapters. And I have the main title selected, and I've renamed it just to be Black Panther. I have just the Dolby Atmos soundtrack selected, because that's all I put in my MKVs is the highest quality uh, English audio track, and I've just renamed that to be Dolby Atmos. But subtitles is what we want to focus on. And if we notice, we have two subtitle tracks here. One listed as PGS English, and then given MKV and how it presents, we have the option to pull forced subtitles out of that track if there are any in it. But then there's a second one down here, a second one. So just looking at this and make MKV, you don't know. You can kind of assume that this is probably the full main movie subtitle, but what is this and, and where are the forced flags and such? We don't know quite yet. This needs to really be analyzed and inspected before you know exactly kind of what's what, how to truly make the proper MKV out of this film. So I'm gonna go ahead and with both subtitle tracks selected and both of their forced checkboxes selected, I'm gonna go ahead and make the MKV to the local disc. All right, so the MKV is done and I want you to focus on the bottom couple lines there of the make MKV results where we see Forced subtitle track number three turned out to be empty and was removed from the output file. Forced subtitle track number five turned out to be empty and was removed from the output file. That means both of these subtitle tracks, or rather neither of these subtitle tracks, actually had four subs. And I can guarantee you that there is some quantity of forced subtitles that you will want, or required subtitles, that you will want in your MKV of Black Panther because we know they speak Wakandan. And when they speak Wakandan, those lines of dialogue in the movie are subtitled. So we have four subs, but Make MKV didn't indicate that we have four subs. And if you're using a piece of automatic software to do this, 
and it's only basing whether it grabs subtitles on whether it finds forced flags or not, your MKV is now lacking. You'll be missing these in your result. Or let's look here using a program called Media Info. I'm going to take the Black Panther MKV, I'm going to drop it in here, and we can see what we ripped. So we ripped the, the video stream, we ripped the first audio stream, Dolby Atmos, and then we have our two subtitle tracks corresponding to the main subtitle content from track three and that track five, the two English tracks. So now how do we figure out what's actually in these and determine if there is in fact something in them or in one of them that we want to retain? So for that, I use a program called Subtitle Edit. I've opened that here. I've actually opened two of them and I'll show you why in a second. But I'm gonna take the Black Panther MKB, I'm gonna drag it into Subtitle Edit and I'm gonna get this pop-up window. It says, choose the subtitle from the Matroska, Matroska file. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick track three. And now Subtitle Edit is going to basically analyze the MKV, looking specifically at the first subtitle track, the one numbered three, the English one there. And it's gonna basically extract those subtitles and give me the ability to review them. What's actually in that subtitle track? What text is it? What are the time codes? So this is gonna take a second to complete. We'll let that finish. All right, so that's done. And now what do I see is this pop-up window indicating we have 1,835 subtitle instances in this track of this movie. And we can see if I scroll through each one, I get a time code, a start time, an end time, a duration, and the text that's contained in there. Now, the other thing I need to do though is find out what's actually in track five. So in the second subtitle edit window, I'm going to bring the MKB in here. This time I'm going to select track five. This will be much faster. And there we go. 68 subtitles in this other track. And knowing what these are, basically by playing the movie, if I want full validation, right, I'll play the movie. I'll enable this subtitle track from the MKB and I will verify what, what, what is the actual content of these subtitles. And for the sake of completeness, I'm not gonna do that on camera because I don't wanna show Black Panther and get the takedown. But suffice to say, I just played a little bit of Black Panther and VLC right here on the computer. I enabled this subtitle track. I jumped to just before three minutes and 28 seconds. And yes, in fact, this is at the very beginning of the movie where the Wakandan guard go and confront Killmonger. They're speaking Wakandan. And if you want to watch Black Panther properly, you want these subtitles, you need these subtitles in your MKV. Again, 68 of them through the entirety of the movie. And once again, these were not flagged as forced. So if you're using software that's looking for forced indicators and automatically grabbing forced subs, and you think you're getting the right thing, odds are very likely that you are in fact not. If you have this movie sitting on your server, you may be missing, in fact, missing these subtitles. Now, if you put the disc, the commercial disc, into a commercial player, it will know to play these subtitles based on like the titling and the mastering and such of the disc. And if your automatic software isn't aware of that or isn't reading the indication to get those subtitles in that way, you're just flat out not gonna get these in the result unless something else somehow intelligently informed the software. And, and for the most part, I, it, for me, I wouldn't trust it. So I always do this as a manual verification. So now to make the final MKB, the one that I actually wanna keep on my server, I now know that subtitle five, number five, this second English sub has what I want in it. It has what I want in the MKB file on my server. I'm gonna just turn off both of the things in that first track. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the forced section of the second track because we've just proven there's actually nothing in it. There's nothing in the force section. And then I'm gonna follow my general convention where I name the force track forced. And most importantly, because MK, I make MKV isn't gonna do this by default, in the MKV flags for this track, it's set to a D for default. I'm going to add an F. And notice now this flag is set to default and forced. And this is how I'm going to make the MKV. And when I play this back in software, or a player that knows to look for forced subtitle flags in MKVs, now these Wakandan subtitles will be properly flagged as, force, as forced. The player, the software, 
will know to enable them. I don't have to manually do it. If I go to watch the movie or a family member goes to watch the movie, that certainly is not gonna be technically inclined to go hunting in a subtitle list and enable the right one. So now here I can make the final MKV. Okay, so I've remade the Black Panther MKV. If I take this file and I drop it into media info, we can see now instead of two subtitle tracks, I have just the one. And let's go ahead and put this back into subtitle edit. Notice when I did it this time, I didn't get a pop-up window. I did not get a subtitle edit selector saying, which track do you want to choose? Because there's only one. By default, subtitle edit, if there's only one subtitle track in the file, that's the one it will analyze. So we'll let this complete. And there we are. What do we have? We have our track of Wakandan subtitles, 68 in this, in this specific track, and all of the subtitles that we would want permanently in the movie on our server, properly set, properly flagged for automatic forced playback and verified and guaranteed. The last thing I'll add just for reference is the, the, the last thing I would do after having all of that and kind of verifying those subtitles and subtitle edit is I would go ahead and play the movie one more time just in VLC right on the computer. I would jump to one or two of those time codes where those subtitles are supposed to be, make sure that they play automatically without manually enabling them, right? Make sure that the force flag was picked up and, and do that one last step of validation. So there you go. The way to really make sure that you have some of the right subtitles in your RIPs, in your MKV files, I, I don't trust any automatic way to do this. I don't trust going to a Google spreadsheet and using that to tell me which track is supposed to have the forced ones in it or not. Just because these movies, they get so many different releases, different editions, disc versions might be different. The mastering could change. If you want to make sure you have the right stuff on your server, in my experience, my recommendation, there's no better way to do it than manually verifying. And this is why ripping is really kind of a pain because you can see how much work it is basically to do it right, verify that it's right, and have the peace of mind that what's on your server in the end is the right thing. And if you watch a lot of science fiction, foreign films, anime, there, there's work to do. And, and a lot of times it's not even this easy. There could be four, there could be five subtitle tracks different things in them. You got to pull up each one of them. You got to kind of analyze it, understand what's in them, and then make your selections accordingly and properly. So of course, if you don't want to do this, well then don't rip. Don't rip to MKV. Rip to ISO and play on a player that has full menu playback that's going to pick up the right flags and the right disc structure and give you the right subtitles reliably, or just forget ripping altogether. Put the disc in a, in a commercial player and watch it that way, you'll get the right thing. Or if you don't want to mess with it at all, buy a Kaleidoscape. That's that's really the options kind of that you have if you want this type of quality, physical physical media level or better quality, and, and making sure that you have the right thing. So if you have questions, post them in the comments. Take a look. I did a longer three-part video series on making MKVs as well as a couple other videos just about physical media and the idea of ripping content in general. Check those out. They'll pop up here uh, with a with a link. In just a second, do all the regular YouTube stuff, like subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. If this is helpful for you, if this is helpful to you and others, please share it. If you feel so inclined to make a super thanks, thank you. And thanks so much for watching. Coming back for more.